I'm going to talk about three words today. Translation, transformation, and transfiguration. And they're all three different. It's like 30, 60, 100. It's like, okay. It's um, what the Lord's been showing me and talking to me about. Is uh, moving into another realm, a greater, a greater realm. It's what we've been wanting. It's what we've been trying to get into. We haven't been able to figure out where the door's at half the time. But all that's about change. Revelation is for activation. It's got to be activated in your heart, but then it's got to come through application through your life, through your hands and your feet, your mouth in this realm. See, kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. See, we've been trying to kingdom come on earth as it is, is on earth. We've been trying to do it from here. The only way we know what it is in heaven is if you go into heaven and see it. Revelation is progressive. It never ends. You never, we never are going to have it all. We're never going to know it all. Eternity. Eternity. We're, it's going to continue forever and ever and ever. You know, the, the angels cry, holy, holy, holy. The four living creatures around the throne, holy! You know why they're doing that? Because they just continue to see creation. It's like, whoa, did you see that? Whoa, did you see that? I mean, they are in awe of God 24-7 for eternity. That's the way we're going to be. It's just going to like blow your mind. In fact, you're not going to have the same mind. Completely transformed. But anyway, what was I going with this? I forgot. Ian Clayton. He said this, and I, you know what? I believe it. I think it's right. So I'm going to say it. You know where it talks about in the Bible where Jesus would go away up on the mountain to pray? According to Ian Clayton, I haven't done the study, but the closest mountain to Israel, Jerusalem, was 400 miles. How did Jesus go 400 miles away to pray on a mountain? Well, it wasn't a natural mountain. When Jesus went away, He went into heaven. The mountain in heaven. The mountain. <laughs> place where God dwells. He went up there and fellowship with the Father. Think about it. That's just stuff I'm thinking about. <laughs> Rewiring the way I think. I think the Bible talks about that in Romans 12. We'll get there in a minute. But I want to. I want to share this anyway. I just threw that out there. You know, some of these guys. You know, man. I mean, the world, you know, we believe in, in Acts 3.19 through 21, I think it is. The restitution or the restoration of all things. Putting back to the original state. We don't even know what that was. We don't know what the world looked like then because the world now, all of it is in a fallen state. And that's our job is to restore it. To bring heaven back to earth. See, heaven was, com earth was compatible with heaven. Before the fall. The earth was different. Man was different. Because Adam ruled all of the earth. And tended and kept all of it. Had total dominion over all of it. One man. So something was different. You know, that's the things I'm thinking about. What did Adam look like? What kind of, what kind of being was he? Well, I'm going to tell you. He was a spirit being. Because God is spirit. He was a light being. Because God is light. He was a life being because God is life. He was a spirit being. He wasn't a human being. Human comes with the word humus, dirt. Adam before the fall was not a human being. He was a spirit being that had a soul and a body. <laughs> but he was a spirit. And see, we think that we're a human being, you know, that has a spirit and a soul. It's, it's the wrong thinking. You gotta start thinking like you're a spirit being because you're made in the image and the likeness of God. We gotta start thinking we're light. Because He's light. If you start thinking of yourself as a light being, things begin to change. You begin to change. What you think you can do begins to change. It's a different perspective. 
I think it's a higher perspective. See, I believe that God is waiting for people who will have understanding of the times and the seasons and know what we ought to do. <laughs> this is cars. God is looking for people who will go into heaven. Did you know death was never intended to be the doorway for God's people to go into heaven? Jesus is the door. He opened the door for us. Who? Enoch, Elijah, that went there, didn't come back, translated, maybe Moses, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, um, we got to think differently. Revelation 3.20 talks about, you know, Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart, handles on our side, we open up and we just use that just for salvation. But it's so much more than that. That's just the beginning. Salvation is the first step into the kingdom. It's just the entrance in. Then we need to open our eyes and start looking in the kingdom. See what's there, what's ours. Because Jesus said, you're heirs and you're joint heirs with me. In other words, everything I got is yours. We're joint heirs. We're co-heirs. Equity. <laughs> Just like Jesus didn't think it odd to, to or wrong to think themselves equal with God. We need to start thinking that we, as He's the Son of God, we have been now changed and we are now sons of God because of what Jesus did through Him. Not the Son of God, but sons of God. Not the King of kings, but kings. Jesus is our high priest, but we're called to function as high priests in the earth for the Lord from heaven. <laughs> Heavenward down to earth. Colossians 1. I'm going to read quite a bit of Scripture. It's going to 12 through 23. And uh, just listen. Translation. This is, tra this is the word. It was used in the Old Testament with Enoch, and then it was used in the New Testament right here. So only two places translation is used. Translation is what happened when you got born again. <laughs> anyway, that's what we're going to read here. Verse 12 says, Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Hello. In light. you got to start looking. we got to start looking at ourselves as light beings. You start looking at yourself as a light being. Like a, like God is light. Things begin to change. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son. How did that happen? We went from darkness to light. From the kingdom of darkness, we were translated into the kingdom of light. Let me tell you how it happened. You got born again. Not of corruptible seed, but of an incorruptible seed. More happened than what we realize. They have now, science is finally catching up with the Bible somewhat. They're, they're finally getting to the place where, where they actually have the technology and that, you know, all knowledge comes from God. More Knowledge has increased more in, I mean, every year now. It's exponential. Isn't it? I mean, it's crazy. Fifty years ago, they didn't have a, a radar for the things that are happening. I mean, fifty years ago, there was no Internet. They didn't know what that was. There was only a few computers, and they were bigger than this room, most of them. <laughs> Think about it. Now, the computer is in my back pocket. I mean, come on. You understand what I'm saying? Increase in knowledge. Anyway, here's the deal. They did this um, genetic study. And they started studying the DNA of men. And they found something really weird that they weren't expecting to find. When they studied believers, Christian people that were born again, confessed born again Christians, their DNA was different than those that weren't born again. Now, we know in genetics, I mean, from science class, that we, we have two strands of DNA. You get 23 chromosomes from your mom, 23 from your dad, right? That make up a human being. But we're not human beings anymore. Now we're light beings. We're God beings. They have found now, when they studied believers born again, that there was actually, there is now a third strand of DNA in the Christians that isn't in the non-Christians. 
And all they can, all they can tell, they can't really see it. All they can see is there's like this shaft, this beam of bright white light that runs right down through the center of the two strands of human DNA. <laughs> We're three stranded. Something changed at our DNA level, at our most basic level. When you're born again, you're really born again. You're not the same. You really are a new creation. Let me drive this home. You're translated out of darkness into light. Everything changed. In whom? We, we, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son? In whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Who is the image of the invisible God? You know, ever wonder why John said, you know, except you be born again, you can't what? Not hear, see. Because it's all about seeing in the kingdom. When you see it, when you've experienced it, when you've laid your eyes on it, you know, that's th that thing, believing is seeing. We see in the Spirit. That's why, that's why, you know, Paul talks about, the, he didn't say that your ears, he said the eyes would be enlightened so he could see into the kingdom. John said he went up there and he looked, he looked, he saw, he looked into heaven. And he saw this and he saw that and he, and he heard too, but he was seeing what was going on. We gotta start with the eyes of our spirit. We gotta start looking into heaven. We gotta start seeing through the eyes of God. I said this last week, I think, but just like natural eyes. You know, I'm looking at these lights. What I'm, what I'm actually seeing is an image in my head. The light, the light, goes through my eyeballs. I don't know the whole thing, but it hits the thing back, retina, I guess. Goes through the lens, hits the retina, so on, so on. Little nerves, fire, sends signals to my brain. My brain forms an image. That's what I'm looking at. I'm not really looking at that. I'm looking at it. It's in my head. It's inside of me. So when you look in the Spirit, it's the same thing. You're not actually... It's actually in you. <laughs> it's in your sanctified imagination. The imagination is the screen where you form the images of what you're looking to in the Spirit. Now, I'm not talking about just making something up. I'm talking about under the power of the Holy Spirit, in the Spirit, sanctified... You know, in His presence, Lord, show me. But we gotta open up and start believing this stuff. All the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. All of creation is waiting for us to manifest. What does that mean? That means what's in you to be seen. What's inside of you to become on the outside of you. See, Adam walked around covered in glory, light. He was covered and clothed in, in light. He was a light being. He was a spirit being. Anyway, I'm going to get back to first or Colossians 1. Verse 14, In whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be what? Thrones? You mean there's thrones? Yeah. Dominions, principalities, or powers. All things were created by Him and for Him. All that stuff was good in the beginning. That's what we got to restore. And He is before all things. And by Him, all things consist. <laughs> that strand of light. Through Him, all things consist. It's all held together. And He is the head of the body. See, all things consist. If He's in all things, then when we, we, we by faith, we speak His words, we can change the things. Because <laughs> He created the things. And the enemy distorted the things. We can recreate or restore, make new again. By the power of the spoken word. 
Not our word, His word. And He is before all things, and by Him all things consist. And He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things He might have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in Him should all fullness dwell. Verse 20, And having made peace through the blood of His cross by Him to reconcile all things unto Himself, by Him I say whether they be things in the earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath He reconciled. Doesn't look like it, but He has. In the body of His flesh through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in His sight. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven. <laughs> every creature. All of creation hears what's being said. They're waiting. They're moaning. They're groaning. Waiting for us, basically, to get our act together. To wake up to who we really are. Start doing what we were called to always do. Translation deals with our spirit. And it's spontaneous power. I mean, when you got born again, it wasn't a process, right? I mean, when I got born again, I got born again. Something changed. I mean, there was an instant where I was different. My spirit, His spirit joined my spirit. And it just was instantaneous. Spontaneous. That's translation, being translated out of darkness into light. There's another step. See, that's 30-fold. That's salvation.